it went really well. It was such a great experience. Uh, I'd really like to thank Screenworks and Lisa and Ken. Uh, it's, it's really a, a unique opportunity uh, from someone from a regional area to get the opportunity to go down and uh, see how these shows work. And it really did, I did really get a lot out of it as a writer and how the business and structure and story mechanisms work in uh, a television series, a broadcast television series such as uh, Love Child. So Tim Pye is the key creative on Love Child. He's the, he's the showrunner, he's the, the head writer, it's his baby. And Tim was great. Tim was really gracious with his time. I got a half an hour on each day I was there before everyone else arrived to pretty much ask any question I liked and he was very very open and forthcoming with his answers. So I really appreciate that from Tim. I was in charge of the script department on Love Child, so I kind of steered the creative energy of it after Sarah Lambert and Gula Sandler and, um, and Liz Doran, who were initially, you know, they were kind of the set-up development team. I was brought on to bring the scripts to production. It's a very rich piece of TV, piece of commercial television. You know, there are five commercial breaks. Now, as a writer, you need to find five turning points in the drama that deliver to the audience a dramatic question that makes sure they're still there after the ads. You know, people talk about a three-act structure. I would say that on a show like Love Child and other commercial dramas, the number of acts is determined by the number of commercial breaks because you need high points. You need moments of dramatic questioning to bring the audience back. Whereas, you know, on um, non-commercial television, uh, like the ABC or some Foxtel productions, uh, you can be much more relaxed about about that structure, but still, you still have to deliver a structure that has at least three acts, but more and more television has more than three acts. TV writers, as a general rule, are the best paid writers. I don't think there's, a, there's one simple way of becoming a screenwriter, um, and I don't think there's one type of person who becomes one. There are some people who go through film school and they study how to write and they read books about how to write and they read scripts and they practice and they practice and they, they get their craft skills up that way. There are other writers who never practice for a moment and they just write something mm -hmm. and it's gold. Most screenwriters in Australia are freelancers. You know, they go from job to job. Um, there are, there's a number of people who work in-house who are more you know they're on a, a salary if you work on one of the long-running series like you know, neighbors or home and away um, then you can have a, a kind of one-year contract which gives you a certain degree of stability but if you're a, if you're one of the contracted writers uh, you know the saying goes you're as good as your last script it's a little bit of a cliche, it's not always true. It'd be nice to think that, you know, established writers who've got some runs on the board get a few more brownie points in the bank. But uh, the, the truth is that if you, if you deliver a script that is deemed not to be good enough, uh, the axe can fall. It's a professional business. The structure of the writing room was uh, Tim was in charge and he was running the meeting. There was uh, the writer of the actual episode we were plotting was a lady by the name of Cathy Strickland. There was uh, another writer called Chris Hackshaw and uh, a, a, another writer slash note taker by the name of Wendy Hanna. And I was sitting in as an observer. So the, the room was set up with uh, three whiteboards on three of the walls. So. Uh, one whiteboard had the story arcs of the characters throughout the entire series, what had happened previously, just key turning points in the, in the story and, and key character traits, and that arced the way through that series. On the opposite side were the beats of the episode, and then 
once they were com complete, those beats, which took one day, one full day, the second day, those beats were transferred to the beginnings of the scene breakdown, from which uh, that information was taken and given to the script writer, Kathy, and she went away and had three weeks, three to four weeks to write that first script, first draft of the script. Given that it's uh, um, some elements of the show are medically based, they did have a midwife uh, on call to ring. Uh, Tim made a conference call several times to check on medical um, procedures and facts to make sure they had that right in certain storylines revolving around the pregnancies of these teenage girls. But at the same, given that the, the, the circumstances of those med medical conditions were manipulated to a degree to suit the storyline. Day one ended with the beats with e within the episode, within the five channel breaks. And then day two was about expanding those into a 20 to 40 page scene breakdown to give to the writer to go away and complete the script, the first draft of the script. I'd like to thank Tim, I'd like to thank Sarah from Playmaker. Actually, everyone from Playmaker was extremely friendly. Everyone went out of their way to help me and to look after me and to do everything they could for me. I, I, can't, I can't thank them enough. Everyone was really good, even down to um, the, the staff members who sent through plot, plot notes and things like that. Everyone couldn't do enough to help uh, me in, in preparing and participating in this program. I was chosen to go to Home and Away for my Inside the Writer's Room. Uh, Home and Away is a TV drama. They produce about two and a half hours a week uh, by Channel 7. I was kind of keeping an open mind. I wasn't really sure what, what I would get out of it. Ideally, you know, I would like to maybe get some work in the long run because they did offer me the opportunity to write a spec script. And on the basis of that, um, that's how they put on new writers. They work on several different blocks during the week. A block being a week of scripts, that's five by half half hours. During the week we had a, a script edit meeting, we had a, a plotting meeting, we had a scene breakdown meeting and I think we had the writer's draft. So it actually started with the scene breakdown meeting from the scenes that had been plotted maybe 10 days before. So there's five writers on, on each week, each doing the half hour, half hour episode one actually works on a script so that one particular block will start with a plotting session there were three people involved in that the script executive the script associate and the storyliner the storyliner comes in for three days of the week and her job is to simply help plot the story and those three people basically worked out what they were going to do. And it's quite a logistical exercise. There's a whiteboard in one corner, um, which has actors availability because sometimes they want to go and leave, they want to go and have a baby. And then there's another whiteboard on the other side, which has got Monday, Tuesday, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it's kind of worked out in who can they use? You know, they need to sort of share all the actors around so everybody gets a certain number of, of episodes to be in. So it was basically, who do we have available? So after the plotting, and that was kind of a sporadic meeting in that we'd go into the script executive's office and they'd be plotting, plotting. Then, oh, he's got to make a phone call. So I'd have to jump up and we'd all leave while he made a phone call. And, um, and then uh, someone would say, okay, we're back in, and we'd go back in for a while. So that went on over a couple of days. That was kind of, maybe started Wednesday, Thursday, and um, yeah, and even half of Friday. And then Friday afternoon were the writer briefings when um, they finished kind of plotting and roughed it out and then the writers were briefed and the writers go away and create a scene breakdown which is kind of fleshing out the, the plot, putting a bit of bones on it. So the writers would then take the plot notes and then return um, a week later with um, scene breakdowns. 
and they're also referring back to previous weeks to make sure there's consistency and they're also projecting forward as well. They might be doing a setup for something. Perhaps there's going to be a new relationship. So they want to build a bit of earth, unresolved sexual tension. That's very important. So after the scene breakdowns, um, then the writers go away and they have three weeks to write the script. As a writer, it was interesting to see the whole process from, from woe to go. It's a valuable opportunity. Um, yes, I think go for it. Oh, it was an amazing experience and a, a great opportunity to meet some of Australia's best television writers and uh, I would highly recommend it to anyone who's interested in getting involved with the program. Oh, it was a great opportunity for me to sit in a writer's room and meet some of the best writers in the country and for me to make some contacts and get some advice about my writing and uh, some inside information about how uh, a writer functions or works in the industry today. In the writer's room there was Simon Hopkinson. He was the commissioning editor from the ABC, the, from the children's department. There was Tony Ayres, who was the executive producer of Matchbox Pictures and the creator of the show Nowhere Boys. There was Beth Frey, who was the producer of the series Nowhere Boys. There was Joe Bell, who's the um, commissioning producer from the ABC, who was running the workshop. There were the three writers. There was uh, David Hannum, who was a senior writer, very well established writer. Gula Sander, who's um, also a very successful writer, and Chris Merkzer, who was basically took the role of the senior writer who's pitching all the ideas that the writers came up with to Tony Ayres. Myself, and there was a, a note taker. Joe Bell from the ABC ran the four day workshop and uh, the writers basically brainstormed for four days, come out with characters and uh, ideas for the show and Tony Ayres basically came in and sat down and uh, said yes or no with, with where the show was going, where the characters were going. My role was to be an observer, but I was uh, asked to uh, give my input and respond to the pitching process. So I was very much involved with uh, coming out with ideas and um, helping the writers uh, develop their characters and the storylines, particularly with the episodes. I would recommend to anyone that was applying to the next round of Inside the Writers Room to make sure that you have a very solid idea that you can articulate in a very simple way. Be very well prepared, make sure that your pitch document is very clear and concise and that you have confidence in your idea and that you make sure that um, you can articulate very easily what your uh, concept is for your television show. Uh, I think the best advice I can give you is that if you can't articulate what your TV show is about, then it's very hard for other people to understand what you're trying to achieve. I'd also like to thank uh, Screenworks, Ken and Lisa at Screenworks for all their help sending up Inside the Writers Room. I'd also like to thank a particular thank you to Warren Clark at Matchbox Pictures for organising me to travel down to Melbourne and sit in the Writers Room for four days. I'd also like to thank Matchbox Pictures and particularly Tony Ayres who's the executive producer and one of the owners for his time and his great advice over the, the four day period.